It's time to take your business to the next level, the boss level. These are the premier business owner strategies and successes being utilized by the industry's top talent today. Rock your business like a boss, a VO boss. Now let's welcome your host, Anne Ganguza. Hey everyone, welcome to the VO Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Anne Ganguza, along with my exciting, wonderful, special guest co-host, Mr. Tim Tippett. Hey Tim, how are you? Hey, how are you? How are you, Anne? Good <laughs> hey, to be here. I'm good. Hey, I have a pretty cool story to tell you. As uh, okay. as you bosses out there might know, Tim built me this amazing, amazing studio f- a couple of months ago. Thankfully, right before we all had to go lock ourselves in our studios. So I have a really <laughs> lovely space to hide out in. But the other day, you know, they've been doing a ton of work because I'm in a new community. And um, you'll be pleased to know that there was this big, huge construction truck, or I'm not quite sure what it was, but they were like jackhammer outside my window. Now, if you remember, Tim, I'm like literally like how close is my booth to the window? In yeah, my your, your, your booth is around, if I remember correctly, around six feet from the window. And yep. then the front, the front of your yard is pretty short. I'm going to say yep. around 10 feet. Yep. And then the truck was sitting right there. So I'd say that your booth is about 16 feet away from yeah, that. So 16 feet. And it was making so much noise. Well, I had my window open first. So I closed my windows. Then I was like, oh, of course, I still hear it. Like, I'm sure everyone does when, you know, the leaf blowers out there. And I was like, oh, gosh, and I have to record an audition. So I went in my booth and I closed my door. And I'm all proud of the fact that I have two doors. So not only did I close one door, but I closed two doors. <laughs> <laughs> and lo and behold, I had a most amazing quiet booth. So I think we should talk about what, you know, how were you able to stop that noise from getting into my booth, you know, so well, because I'm just amazed. Yeah. So normally people will bury the lead in a story. Um, I'm I'm glad that you started <laughs> with the lead because this uh, we can kind of turn things on its head, right? So, uh, so for people who don't know, I have a very strong construction background. I grew up in the trades in LA. Normally, if you're a musician, you're in construction. It's just, they go hand in hand. Uh, I became a tradesman and, uh, went on a tour to, you know, fulfill a recording contract and all that, but then decided I was going to be a family man. So I jumped back into construction and, and went through the ranks and eventually, you know, ended up at a fairly high position until I got the hell out of there and decided to get back to my roots. (laughs) Uh, but because of that, I have a ton of, of uh, experience with um, with construction. And I used to actually build developments like the one that you're in, right? Uh-huh. So I Lucky certainly for me. understand. <laughs> yeah. And I certainly understand uh, what it's like for people to be dealing with noise, not even voice artists, just dealing with noise, waiting for homes to be finished and then turned over to them, right? Mm-hmm. It means everything to you, obviously, that you get in there as soon as possible. Absolutely. And as a result of this, the way that it works out is, They'll start building homes based on the models, right? You go and you see Mm -hmm. the model and you go, I want that one. Okay, I'll take this lot. Now, unfortunately, you have a lot of empty lots next to you. So what you're going to be dealing with for at least the next few months, if not the next couple of years, are a lot of these homes being built relatively close to your home. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, even even as someone who owns a home, that's pretty irritating because you're dealing with jackhammers and all sorts of other stuff all during the day. But as a voiceover artist, it just seems like a non-starter, right? Mm. So since we're starting with the extreme version of what we would do to mitigate that noise, which is really what this particular episode is all about, is it's about mitigation of noise, a.k.a. soundproofing. Okay, so what you had when you sent me that video and of you looking at the uh, large compressor, this is a thing that's Mm -hmm. about as tall and as wide as the truck itself, it's huge. Yes. And what was actually happening there is they were pumping concrete into the no- into a lot that was close to you, right? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. So now those things are incredibly loud. So it was almost an uh oh moment for me until I realized <laughs> that I built <laughs> until I realized that I built your booth exactly the way that I built my booth, right? Uh, which uh, b- people have heard that I've had chainsaws uh, literally 40 feet from my from my booth and nothing got in, right? So when you closed the window and then I heard that, I was like, okay, still pretty loud. Right. And you walked into the booth and then you were like, it's quiet, you know? <laughs> and, and as I told you earlier, I smiled at it and almost brought a tear to my eye, right? You know, it was a very proud moment. <laughs> and, you know, I should, I should have it be known for the people out there listening that I had a choice when I was talking to Tim about where to put my booth because I couldn't decide whether I wanted it upstairs 
in towards the back of the house or in the front of the house. But I, I personally wanted my my office to be somewhere where it would be very light. So I chose to be closest to the road and probably to give Tim, I don't know, more work to deal with <laughs> because yeah. I was going to be closer to the road. But ultimately, it's supposed to be quiet here because I live in a right. community that's just quiet. I'm, I'm kind of in a cul-de-sac. Um, yep. But so, Tim, did that have any effect? Like, I I remember when we would discuss, like, did I want to have it upstairs? Like, what kind kind of noises I would be, you know, dealing with if I were upstairs versus downstairs in the front of the house? Well, my concern was not so much about what we could or could not achieve with your booth. My concern was... Well, where does Anne want her booth? What is mm. the ultimate, you know, location for her so she feels comfortable when she right. gets out? She's got daylight, and we didn't have those options uh, upstairs because the, True. you know, you have this big picturesque window out there, which is lovely, and you want to mm-hmm. let all that light in. So I had enough confidence in the materials and the means and methods and and the science behind it all to just go ahead and I, I guess, for lack of a better way to put it. Uh, boldly move forward where no man and no woman has gone before, right? So I picked the the noisier part of the house, which had more windows and was closer to the road. Right? No, you yep. didn't pick the you didn't pick the noisier part no. of the house. You picked the noisiest part. Okay, of Okay, the there house. you go. <laughs> so <laughs> just just to make your job fun. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't want I just didn't want to say that at the time. But no, I I moved forward with confidence with me and my team because I knew. That uh, with a combination of, of construction materials and, and, again, means and methods that we were going to use, that it was going to get the job done. So I think it's good to work backwards from there and mm. just kind of talk about the different levels of, um, of soundproofing. And, and by the way, guys, not to be confused with acoustic treatment. I've had many people mm. ask me good point. if you install, uh, you know, Roxel panels. Because we do use Roxel when we're building a booth in between the voids of, of the framing, right? Because it helps quite mm-hmm. a bit. But that is not the answer. I just want to make that clear because I've had so many people tell me, well, if I just hang Roxel panels all over, uh, then that soundproofs it. No, that, that's not true at all. All you're doing is you're dealing with the acoustics, which, which is the response of the space, not the response of noise on the outside of mm. your space trying to get in. Those are two completely different things. And, and people... People understandably get them mixed up all the time because, as I always like to say, you don't know what you don't know. Okay. Right. And, and that's fine that you don't know, but it's not fine if you don't go find out, right? Because <laughs> th- this is your career on the line and, and you, need to, uh, you need to bring the best that you possibly can to the table for your clients, right? And, um, and you also need to bring the best that you can for yourself because when you do have proper soundproofing as well as proper acoustics, uh, your confidence level goes way up because you're not sitting there wondering if you sound good or not. And so mm-hmm. as a result of that, you get to be more confident. You get to be more vulnerable when you need to be as a character and so on and just not have to worry about it. Yeah. And if I can interject and say that, you know, during this time of, of the pandemic, I felt super confident that I had a quality studio where I didn't have to worry about. That was one less thing I had to worry about, especially in this time where there's such a call now for, you know, a uh, talent to have studios that really produces a great sound with all the other studios being shut down. So um, this was super important to me to have this in place. And I'm really grateful and thankful that I did have it in place during this time. So. Yeah, absolutely. And as a result, we are producing, a lot of us are producing better audio than we're getting from uh, brick and mortar studios anyway. Mm. Uh, That's just the reality of the situation. Um, Maybe not all of them. Okay. But we are, we are definitely meeting and or exceeding the need uh, in many, many ways. So that's the great news. Now, the bad news is, is that everyone and their mother uh, who is used to being on one side of the glass and not the other, they don't, you know, deal with the tech, was suddenly put in a position where they needed to get their spaces together. Right. And, uh, you know, they had to do it right now. So, of course, you know, the last five months for me has just been a flood of emails and all that. And, <laughs> oh, and I am sure. Set up. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's, been, it's been pretty brutal. But, um, you know, I, I love helping people get in that position and, and watching them succeed. Uh, so I'm more than happy to help. And I will say to that end, Tim, like literally you like this whole thing was coming down <laughs> the pandemic. And I'm thinking to myself, Tim might need to leave like soon. Yeah. 
And yeah, no, and, I, I wasn't. And, I didn't. I didn't care about COVID. Um, he really at that didn't, time. guys. He really didn't. I just want you all to know that. That, and I was starting to get concerned. And I'm like, okay, so I, I have to send my father. My father came, so I had to send my father back. And I'm like, we Tim really needs to go um, at this point, not yeah. because I wanted him to, but because it was, you know, people were starting. I think you left the day before lockdown in California. If I remember, um, correctly. I left the I left the day of lockdown. The day of in lockdown California. in California. Yeah, yeah. So. And, uh, and Bob was a great help uh, in assisting us. He helped us uh, build the booth as My well. My dad. Aw. Yes. And and I was really concerned uh, about him as well. Me you too. Know, making sure that, yeah, making sure that he got out of there in a timely manner. But yeah. uh, e- even then, as you remember, I brought in that big thing of hand sanitizer for the people who <laughs> yeah. were installing oh, the absolutely. blinds. And, you know, just absolutely. to make sure that we didn't, yeah, just to make sure we didn't have anything uh, that, that we really needed to be concerned about and kept travel to a minimum, which is what we should all yes. do. Um, but at that point we had gotten that far, there was no way in hell I was turning back. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, that's just the reality of the situation. Uh, this is a good place to start because right now we have the ultimate, uh, as you have dubbed it, the beast, right? The, yes, I have um, the beast. <laughs> yeah. Now we recently did a build, which, uh, is, is the details are in the class at uh, viotechguru.com forward slash courses for anyone who's interested in that. So all the details of building these booths, we do quite a few projects in there aside from, you know, teaching people EQ, compression, downward expansion, and all the other stuff that they need to win. But what I'm currently doing is I'm kind of posting uh, short cuts or versions of what's going on with the build on my Instagram, which is Tim Tippett's aka Viotech Guru. Uh, you can check it out if you want to. People seem to be enjoying it, but oh yeah, it's just a lot it's of just people cuts. followed when you were here. Yeah, great, awesome. Well, in in this particular build that we're doing for Laura Keenan, she's on the 14th floor of a downtown Los Angeles um, apartment. Right? Oh, I thought she was in New York for some strange reason. She's no, in LA. No, no, she's got in it. LA, and and she's got sirens and all sorts of stuff. So. We start off the video with her showing what it is that she has to do, but she goes in the video, she shows you what she has to do. She has to pull her fridge all the way out, unplug it, unplug the water cooler, uh, close the balcony door, turn the TV off, turn the AC off. And as she says in the video, tell her husband, shh, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this is just to audition. Okay. Right. So and, and she had a makeup booth with blankets, which was acoustically very sound, but you can only go so far with those. Right. Right. So what I agreed to do is I said, Hey, look, if you document all of this stuff, the actual build, then what I will do is I will guide you through the process. All right. Well, we're going to have some more videos released here. Probably this weekend, more than likely will be part three. So people can take a look at that. But the point is, is that we went from uh, a noise floor of minus 38, which is unacceptable. You can't voice with a noise floor at 38. And, and by the way, that's with everything turned off. Okay. Yeah. Uh, with it turned on, it was just ridiculous. It, it was a total non starter. So now she's in that finished booth, and Steve, her husband, who built the booth, keeps coming in and uh, can't seem to thank me enough. Uh, he's a great guy. I love him. But uh, he's so proud of it, and he likes to keep telling me. That when she's in there, he can't hear her at all and she can't hear him while he's watching TV, right? And uh, so that that is, uh, by the way, she's calling that the sh- the she beast booth. So, the she beast. The she <laughs> So beast I have the beast booth. and she has the you she have the beast. beast and she has so, the she beast. Yeah. So then what's important then, Tim, in terms of noise mitigation that that the bosses out there can at least start to understand the concepts of what needs to happen? Fair question. So. This could be a two hour conversation. It's not <laughs> going to be. So I'm just going to I'm just going to touch on some things that we can kind of help get people's heads around. So sound is energy in the form of vibration. Low frequencies are far more powerful than high frequencies. We had that discussion in the acoustics episode, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But the thing about sound is since it is vibration, if it's allowed to hit a structure and then vibrate that structure, those vibrations will travel through the structure and into whatever space you're in. And a lot of that vibration, aka sound, okay, mm-hmm. is l- very low frequency vibration. So a lot of the times, much of it can be handled by rolling off at 80 hertz. And Mm -hmm. the layman's version of that is hertz are related to pitch. So the lower the hertz value, uh, hertz means one cycle per second, okay, for for a waveform. 
uh, with, again, without trying to get too deep into it. But the point is, is that you can roll off at 80 hertz and that's going to get a rid of a lot of low end rumble. So that may not have anything to do with building a booth, but it's something that people should understand. They're, they're typically called high pass filters, which is a name from, I don't know what they were thinking when they said high pass filter, but the idea is to only let the highs pass through. Okay. That makes but sense. We, yeah. But mm -hmm. we more commonly refer to it as rolling off the low end. Okay. Now, in Laura's case, that didn't help a whole lot because a lot of the noise that she was experiencing by the time it got to her apartment, a lot of that low energy high. had kind of just dissipated. Uh -huh. But she's got a refrigerator not 10 feet from her booth and right. a water cooler four feet from her booth. And so she's dealing with a noise floor as a result of things that are around her that are making noise right now in real time, right? Uh, so on that note, the first key is what we call mechanical separation which means getting your booth as disconnected from the rest of the structure as possible. And that doesn't take a whole lot. So if you were to build like, let's say a typical wooden framed booth, you would want to put padding underneath. Uh, in your case, we didn't do that. And because you had carpet and we just went right. directly to that. Right. right. So it, it was isolating. So the vibration Vibration doesn't do a real good job of traveling up through carpet material, right? Got it. Got and it. the same and can we're be on the said base floor. for, we're on, right. I'm on the first right. floor. Got it. Yeah. You're in your slab on grade, right? So the slab is literally right, right there. And, uh, while concrete can transmit that vibration, it doesn't do a very good job of well, it. Right? That makes sense because in my previous home, when I had my other booth, um, I had to have a filter take care of the. I used to, if trucks would pass by, let's say, because there was a lot of construction going on there, if trucks like miles away, like a couple of miles away would pass by, I actually would hear it. I'd get it in my booth because my booth was up on the second floor. And so the filter that I had took care of that noise, mm -hmm. which makes sense. Um, yeah, and it would, and it might take care of planes, unless, of mm -hmm. course, you're in Burbank and right, the right. plane is going to be flying very, very closely to you. Right. And now that I'm here and I'm on the ground floor, I don't have that so much to worry about. Is that correct? Well, it's not so much that as much as it is that, first of all, you have a concrete floor ah, and it's going it. to be more difficult for that vibration to come up through the ground into something with that much mass. So. So th this is another, uh, <laughs> it's not controversial, controversial for me, but it is for a lot of other people because you'll hear this all the time. The key is mass. The key is mm. mass. And that is not true. Uh, mass certainly helps, but there are sciences and uh, materials and means and methods that we can use to really disconnect a, a space from the space within in order to eliminate a lot of that with very little mass. And we saw this in your booth, Anne, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we don't have uh, concrete walls on your booth, Correct. right? It's drywall with green glue and Roxel insulation and mechanical isolation, mm -hmm. and we're getting amazing results, yep. okay? So if it's done the right way, the way I like to put it is like this. If you were to hang a four by eight sheet of plywood from your ceiling, uh, four foot by eight foot plywood from your, from your ceiling, and you did the same thing with the duvet cover that's, that's four feet wide by eight feet long. If you threw a hundred mile an hour fastball at that plywood, what would you expect it to do? It would react. That ball would bounce off exactly. very quickly. And hit right? me in the but face. If you, <laughs> right. But if you threw that same hundred mile an hour fastball at that duvet, what would happen? Well, it would hit it and then it would drop. I would right, feel it would like down the, the floor. You would drop to the floor down the duvet. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. There's no way it's going to make it through the duvet cover. Yeah. It's right? not going to ricochet back either. Right. And so the idea here is if you do this correctly, and, I, and I've done this in incredibly uh, busy areas, uh, we did it uh, with my larger booth build. We had a cabinet shop right across the alley from us. We had a foundry behind us. We had the fire department right up the street, which was very fond of turning their stuff on right before they left the station all the way down the street. And, uh, and we had a warehouse on the other side of the street, and we never heard any of it just because we applied the sciences and, and what mm -hmm. we're trying to do here is we're trying to create a giant catcher's mitt. It's as simple Got as that. It. Got it. It's the reason why a hundred mile an hour fastball doesn't break a catcher's hand. It's the exact reason why. So is mass the answer? Yes. Is science the answer? Yes. Are materials the answer? Yes. And mm -hmm. is mechanical, uh, isolation the answer? Yes. It's a combination of all these things. There's never, ever, ever just one thing, unless you build a bunker, 30 feet underground out of concrete, then, okay, you have right. an argument, okay? Right. But the reality is, is that we have materials and means and methods and understandings that we didn't have before that we can put in 
to play in real time to really help the situation. Okay. So, well, I was going to say so. So then, my booth downstairs, right, that you built, mm-hmm. you know, for me, which is constructed of you know drywall and Roxel and green glue and all of that, versus the temporary studio that I had, which had the blankets, which were which was awesome. I was. Mm-hmm. It was lucky that I was in a quiet area because I remember when I was recording up there, I would have to tell people to be quiet um, right. because, right, there just wasn't as much, I guess, I, I guess, mass and material and construction to, um, you know, to prohibit that sound from coming in. However, if it was quiet, it was an amazing booth. Um, right. And it, yes. and it worked really well versus when you're constructing a booth and then I've got different materials, you've got to like add to those materials to make it so that there's less a chance that the noise can come in. This is a great uh, transition into what I wanted to talk about next, because what will happen a lot of the times is people will get them in a situation, uh, get themselves in a situation where they will go into a closet and they'll put foam on the walls or blankets or whatever. And then on the other side of their exterior wall, They've got, uh, I don't know, a swimming pool pump. That seems Mm -hmm. quite common, especially in apartments, okay? And they have to wait for the pump to turn off. And and, and I understand and sympathize with that, but here are some, some key pieces of advice that I can give people to maximize the soundproofing of your space if you don't have options to build an actual booth. First of all, Vocal Booth to go, for instance, does sell prefabricated booths at all levels, and they are excellent. They have just the blanket versions, which have an unfolding frame like the one that we had at your house, Anne, mm-hmm. uh, which kind of just articulates like a spider, right? It's real easy to take apart and put together. And yep. I want to say that was a three by six, if I'm not mistaken, four by six, whatever. I think it was a four by six. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have a place, uh, especially if you're not living near a busy street or something, that might, that alone might just get the job done. I've heard many people, as I said in the last episode, who have built PVC booths, booths with just the blankets and everything sounded great. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so when you are In that situation, what you want to do is you want to look for the usual suspects that are going to cause trouble for you. So that consists of what's happening overhead. Is it a busy traffic area? If you're in a basement, same thing. Are you right underneath the foyer? Are you right underneath the living room? Because obviously you're going to have a lot more traffic, hopefully, Mm -hmm. in your living room than you will in your foyer. Mm -hmm. But those sounds come through the ceiling. So when you don't have too many choices in that regard, then what you need to do is you need to, number one, look for a space in your house where you're going to have the least amount of activity or traffic above you. And the other thing is watch for mechanical devices. For instance, you wouldn't want to put your booth right next to the air handler in your basement Mm -hmm. because when that thing turns on and off, it's going to be very loud. There's going to be a ton of low frequency coming through. Uh, Another thing would be if you're in a closet and I know people need ventilation, I understand that. For me personally, when I'm in a situation like that, I just throw a fan in there on a switch and when I'm not talking, I turn it on to cool myself off and then I'm good to go. There are ways, as we did with yours, and uh, not to get too detailed, where we Mm -hmm. were able to incorporate air into the booth without it being noticeable, but that's another story. Now, a closet can be a great place to voice, again, last episode as long as it's acoustically sound right and as long as it's quiet enough your environment is quiet enough and and this has a full spectrum i've dealt with so many people who are living in the city and they're choosing a closet uh in order to just try to mitigate as much noise as possible and sometimes it's doable because that closet is far enough away from the street or they may be living in a building that is just made out of solid concrete And so it's doing a really good job, aside from the windows, of course, of uh, keeping most of the noise out. So, uh, again, air vents that are inside closets can be a pretty big bear. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, again, if you have an air vent inside of your closet, that is going to be one of those usual suspects that I talked about Mm. because that air is going to come through and... But I want to make a point. It may be that by using RX elements, which we've succeeded setting these racks up many, many times where RX actually did handle that. It handled the computer 
noise with the fan right. kicking on and, and that's good whatnot, to know right? Yeah. So even if you're in that type of a situation, it may be that you'll be able to get rid of it and you'll be fine. And if, and if you want to send me some of your audio or you need help with that, you can contact me at info at VOTechGuru.com. I do offer a free 15 minute consultation, check out your audio, give you some advice. And then if we end up working together, great. But uh, yeah, at the end of the day, you want to try to find the quietest place you can in your home, make sure it's acoustically sound and then just go for it. Yep. Well, good stuff. Good information there, Mr. Tippetts. Thank you so much. Guys, we have so much. We could just, I'm so glad that I'm going to have you for a few episodes because I guess we could pro- we could probably talk for the next year at least <laughs> <laughs> about all things audio. So yeah, again, you guys, um, Tim has, has mentioned multiple, multiple nuggets of wisdom for you guys. And if you need help, um, definitely look him up at VOTechGuru.com. Um, I'm going to give a big shout out to our amazing sponsor, IPDTL, so that Tim and I can get together and and network and communicate and record and do all sorts of things. Uh, boss, you can find out more at IPDTL.com. You guys have a great week and we'll see you next week. Thanks. See you. Bye. Bye. Join us next week for another edition of VO Boss with your host, Ann Ganguza. And take your business to the next level. Sign up for our mailing list at voboss.com and receive exclusive content, industry revolutionizing tips and strategies, and new ways to rock your business like a boss. Redistribution with permission, coast-to-coast connectivity via IPDTL.